I would give them like diamonds. <laughs> no, that's not true. I'd give them like such a treat. It's because it takes so much effort to get to my house. Come to my house. And they're like, are you sure? <laughs> there's 12 of us. Like, I don't care. Like as long as I know how many people there's gonna be, I'm good. I never told my mom this, but it was, I was making out with my boyfriend <laughs> and chipped my tooth. And I was like, I was eating a popsicle. Or I don't know what that was. <laughs> that's, maybe that sounds even worse. Like, <laughs> it sounds so lame, but like soup for seniors. So I, maybe I talked about this before. I don't think that I have, but I keep having this fantasy. I want something sexy. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> my podcast, I should say. The Kitty Liquor Podcast. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. This is episode 110. And the final episode of Halloween. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've been waiting to wear this dress. It is a incredible dress from... Not Sugar Thrills, but a sister brand, Widow, uh, from the website Dolls Kill. Uh, and they actually make this in many different colors. They came out with this navy and I had to have it. And I want the other ones too, but I'm like, I can't justify the cost of this dress in multiple colors. <laughs> it's different when it's like a little piece of lingerie because I've got like these lacy teddies from... Sugar Thrills, I've got like nine or ten of them in every color, but they're more affordable. They're getting a bit more expensive as time goes on. But anyway, so I am bitten and I'm not quite transitioned into a vampire yet. I was trying to find fangs, but I couldn't. Besides, you know, those fake teeth that you put in your mouth that are like the cheap plastic ones. Uh, I should have like thought I had an order online, but... Anyway, you know, like I said, I, I've been bitten and now I'm just waiting to transition. I might be kind of like Bella from Twilight, where she's not quite a vampire. She's in between. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a lot about the Twilight series and I could be totally wrong about that. But let me just take off my whoop. A lot of you guys always ask what this is. This is my whoop band. And essentially it just monitors my sleep my heart rate, my oxygen levels, all that fun stuff. And there's no point in wearing it now because I'm a vampire and I'm dead, so it won't really monitor much of anything. <laughs> so that's why I'm taking it off. <laughs> so, are you guys excited for Halloween? Um, are you going to any parties? This is Friday, so I'm assuming that you're going to, uh, maybe not assuming that you're going to go, but if you are going to go to a party, it's gonna be tonight or tomorrow night. So that's just that. <laughs> and I'm wearing my party costume already. Woo! So it's funny with this dress. I am wearing pasties, by the way, underneath because it's clear mesh. Um, and I really have to like, so these cups are a bit too small for my titties. But if I pull my boobs up to give myself like extreme cleavage, then it shows the pasties. And I can't really sacrifice one for the other. So it's kind of like squishing my boobies but I think that that's just how it has to be <laughs> I'm sorry that my titties are just so big <laughs> um so I am going as a vampire to be I'm kind of like engaged to a vampire but I'm not quite transitioned yet into one so anyway enough about that spiel all right so it is <laughs> so funny it snowed 14 inches overnight and it looks like it is December 20th. <laughs> and I'm really excited about the fact that we have snow. But at the same time, I'm a little bit traumatized because I haven't had my Halloween party yet or celebrated my Halloween stuff yet. And so it's confusing for, for me because I'm like, it's beginning to look a lot. I'm like, no, no, it's not Christmas yet. <laughs> and then I'm like thinking about Christmas decorations, like, oh, you know, and this this type of wrapping. I'm like, no, stop. It's not, it's not Christmas time yet. 
Um, I am one of those people that brings out the Christmas decorations on November 1st. That's not true because I'm lazy and I'll leave up my my autumn Halloween decorations up longer than that. <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say is I decorate early for Christmas and I really plan ahead. Typically, I get most of my Christmas shopping done in October. Um, so I've done some so far, but I've been, a, like I said, a busy bee. So I've been out of the country and all over the place. And so now now it's crunch time. Like for me to have not ordered everything yet is a little bit like, eh. So it's okay. It's going to happen. I've got time. I just have, I think when the whole world shut down for a while and then shipping was iffy, like you're paying for two-day shipping, but it's coming in three months because... They had an excuse, you know, so it's still sort of, it's still sort of the excuse, but I don't know. What am I even talking about that for? This is a Halloween episode and I got a big poofy, lovely dress on that I love and I can't wait to wear all night long and dance all night long. I'm wearing pants underneath this dress right now just because of the itchy factor. There is a waistband that has lots of tulle because this has like this beautiful lacy layer, but then it's got this horrific treacherous goddamn tooly fishnet <laughs> that's itching me to so i have to i have the perfect solution i've got like nude high-waisted underwear um so it'll look like i'm wearing nothing and it'll also protect my waistline from <clears throat> being shredded and i know it's halloween but it's not what i'm into at this point so let's get into concoctails. So I have this, so this, this is not my original idea. I saw this on um, Instagram Reels and there's actually this beautiful blonde girl that I, I keep, like she keeps popping up in my feed but I don't follow her. But she does like similar to what I do, try on clothes and that kind of thing. But she also creates cocktails. And one of her cocktails was this, <sighs> basically a martini glass. She cut two little red peppers and stuck them on the edge of the glass. They look like little horns and made this beautiful red cocktail. The ingredients, I don't know what they were. I just screenshotted it, but it's a red cocktail. Um, I'm going to create my own little concoction and add some edible glitter and we're just going to do it all together on camera. And you know, <laughs> my paper towel roll is way over there. And I'm going to make such a mess, I know it, but maybe not. Knock on wood. Okay, so this is the glass that will be holding the cocktail. And I don't know what the hell, but my cocktail shaker has gone missing. <laughs> the one that's supposed to go in there. This one is very similar and will work and is full of ice. So... I have some leftover red wine and typically if I've, if I have a red, a bottle of red wine that's unopened for like more than two or three days, I won't drink it. I know that that might be very strange to some of you, but I can taste as soon as it's starting to turn a little bit. And I almost should put like my red wine in the fridge just to kind of make it last longer because I am more of a white drinker and... I kind of like to mix like cocktails or I don't drink a lot of red wine unless I'm, you know, indulging in like a nice steak or something. Um, but this, I had a friend over, we cracked this. Literally, that's all we drank. If you can't see on camera, it's right here. Um, it was just because the wine is just not, not worth the calories. <laughs> Basically, it was not that good. So... But I kind of had this like sangria type vibe in my mind when it came to creating a cocktail. I don't have juice to mix it with, but I've got some elderflower rose gin as well as some triple sec. And it's funny, this triple sec bottle will not take one of these little pourers. <laughs> Because the, the neck is too thin or something like that. But And then I have this pepper that I'm going to cut little horns out of. <laughs> um, I'm going to go for also some cinnamon bitters because, I mean, this could be a disaster. But I'm thinking 
the red wine with the triple sec, which are also two ingredients in sangria. I've got some simple syrup here. I might just see how things go, feel it out. Of course, I've got my delicious cherries, my Amarina wild cherries and syrup from straight from Italy. What do I know? I'm just a simple vampire to be creating a cocktail. So let's just see how this goes. I've got some ice. I've also got some glass straws. <laughs> These uh, I ordered from Amazon. And what the hell? Oh, it's because my hands are wet from the condensation. I was like, these are clean. So I can also use this to get all the little bits from the bottom, but I feel like a glass straw is just classy. And I've got my picks for my cherries. This is gonna be fun. Oh yeah, let's not forget to light the candles like I have for like the last however many episodes. <laughs> Did you know that when you are lighting candles, you don't, and you know when you have to hold it down for a long time because the candle, the wick won't light and it's hot and then you have to like relight it. You don't need to relight it. You just press down the button and then catch flame from the other one. And um, I don't think anybody taught me that. I think I just figured it out myself. Come on. Oh, because I don't want to burn my thumb, you know, like, you know, you do it really fast because you know it's hot. You don't have to. As long as there's one candle lit already, you don't need to do it ever again. <laughs> okay, so also, oh my gosh, you guys, I got these. Um, it's really difficult to see how bright they are because of how many lights are in the studio right now. But these are little kind of simulation burning light bulbs. <laughs> um, they look super cool and they're very warm and like ambient. I've got like this, it essentially looks like a tube, but it's um, kind of like a, a cream colored tube and it takes two light bulbs. It's just like a nice like corner lamp. And I put both of these um, light bulbs in there, lit it in the corner. It literally from the corner of your eye looks like there's like a, like a fire crackling in the corner. And it's really, really great. And I, I saw the reviews, reviews online and I couldn't help but buy it because everybody was like, they're wonderful, they're amazing. And you can really put them anywhere. And it's funny because they've got like the simulation fire next to the real fire. But we're just catching all the vibes here. <laughs> I've also got a couple new neon lights. This guy that says we're open and this lovely lady behind me that you can't really see because of this ring light, but it's essentially me with my arms up, um, just, you know, getting ready to put my hair up in a ponytail. <laughs> um, these are kind of like new pieces for my new studio that is being drywalled. Oh my God, it's happening. I have to go pick out some carpet and I have a little bathroom in there. So I have to pick up finishes for that as well. Very exciting. Let's make a drink. So I think first, are we gonna measure? Where the hell did all my shit go? I think I just did not actually officially put everything away after the last time I did this. I washed it all, but it's put away somewhere downstairs. Anyway, um, let's see. So I'm gonna start with the red wine and I'm gonna eyeball all of this because I don't have my measuring thing, <laughs> but I've never used the measuring thing before, the point, before I had it. So we're just gonna go back old school. And I don't want to, like, I think we just weren't vibing with the red wine. It's not that this is even a really bad wine. This is a 2016. Um, nice bottle. But it's kind of like it just wasn't what we were wanting. And it's now it's about three days. So anyway, we're going we're gonna to use it. It's not going to go to waste. So we got about, I don't know, how many ounces of that. Like a quarter cup-ish <laughs> of that. Now we're going to, those candles are putting off some heat. I was like, is something on fire? <laughs> Me with my like crazy, I don't know, random fabric from wherever. 
Okay, now some triple sec. You guys, look at how freaking crooked the label is on this bottle. What the hell? Who's putting this shit together? Where's this made? Return for refund where applicable. I'm returning it because it the label is crooked. No, I'm just joking. Toronto, come on. What kind of bullshit is that? <laughs> anyway. Ounce and a half. Then we've got some elderflower gin. Now this is red. <laughs> I've got the um, other gin, which is blue, but this will be more appropriate for a cocktail. I don't know. It's hard to measure what, what comes out of that thing. It just pours right out. Now I don't think I'm gonna have to add any food coloring. I brought some red food coloring in case, but I think this is definitely gonna be red enough. Now I'm gonna add some cinnamon bitters. And I'm not gonna lie, I tasted this when I first like received this from Cocktail Emporium. And I wasn't impressed, it tastes kind of watery and I don't know what the hell it's supposed to taste like, but I do like two full of those. Two kind of like quarter droppers of that. And I'm wondering if we should accessorize our glass first. You know what I want to do? I want to add some cherry juice in there, but I'm afraid to pour the cherries out of this, honestly. Because it's going to be... Oh, God. If I was a vampire... Blood, I would assume, smells that good to a vampire. This is my blood <laughs> as a human. Do you understand what I'm saying? Wow, wow, wow. I wonder if I should just use one of the straws. I'm going to suck it up halfway and then spit it in there. But it won't touch my mouth. So it's sanitary, right? It's kind of like when you siphon gas out of a car. It doesn't touch your lips. <laughs> it's very different, but here we go. Mm-hmm. I think we need one more dose. You just got to do what you got to do. That's what I say. You know? And that looks kind of like... Satisfying. Okay, I'm going to put that in there. And we're going to shake this puppy up. And I do feel like I need to cut little ears sorry, horns, before I do this, but I'll do it after. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, I forgot something. I forgot something. It's very important. Maybe not super important, but important enough. The shimmer dust. God, who wants to drink a cocktail that's not shimmery? Not me. Especially because like vampire skin is supposed to be so glittery. I was going to put glitter all over my entire face and I thought, maybe not. Well, there's that. Now we can continue shaking. This is edible shimmer dust. You can get it on Amazon. Dress. So we're gonna go like this. How do I do it? Every time. Okay, first let's let's look at how beautiful it looks. I'm not sure if you can see the swirliness of the glitter shimmer dust. I can't. But sometimes when you shake a cocktail, it gets air bubbles in it and it's not as clear as it will be. But let me just taste it before I cut the ears up. <gasps> I 
Okay, let me make more room first to tilt the glass to show you. How did I do that? How did I actually do it? Okay, here. Before I start really making a big deal about how much of a genius I am. Total sangria vibes, but it's like spicy and delicious. <laughs> and holy shit. Okay, so this is going to be going on in the description box of this video. If you're listening to this podcast, I have a video version on YouTube and down below in the description box will be this recipe. Now, wow, oh, that is good. And it definitely has like Halloween vibes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do here with this. Um, I want to not screw this up. And I want the horns to be decently long. So this is a red bell pepper, a mini bell, and it's not spicy at all. I use these often in salads that I make. So the idea is to make little horns and, but I feel like I'm just gonna have to skinny this up. It's a little bit too thick, this one and this one. And then I'm just gonna slice a little, slice a little slice. Let's see how this looks. Will it stand up or will it tip over? <gasps> no, it's okay. We can, we can doctor it. It's really about the effort. <laughs> no, I want it to work. They almost look like little kitty ears, but this, how do I make it stand up more? Maybe they are kitty ears and one is just going down. This was the idea. Wow. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So you could get smarter you know, let me try it with these. This works, but I think I need a smaller little, you can get them quite a bit smaller. You could even use chilies if you were gonna risk the uh, spice factor. But I think if I slice it in, I don't know what I'm talking about. So let's try that. Slice it at a bit of a different angle, it's not gonna tip. Okay, there we go. Maybe that works better. Smaller, better. Like little devil horns. Even though the devil and the vampire realms are kind of different areas, this is good. What would I change about it? I didn't need to use any simple syrup just because of the syrup from the cherries. Um, you know what? Let me just get a little pick going here for our cherries because I'm not gonna make this cocktail without my fairy, my fairy favorite ingredient, cocktail ingredient of all time, the cherry. I mean, the cherry, wah, ah, ah. Okay. Um, are you somebody who enjoys giving out Halloween candy? I think I could be, but I don't have neighbors. <laughs> and if, if a kid showed up at my house to trick or treat, first of all, I probably wouldn't be home. But second of all, I would give them like diamonds. <laughs> no, that's not true. I'd give them like such a treat. It's because it takes so much effort to get to my house. You know, like and if, if a kid is maybe back in the good old days, like I think about the way that, and maybe they didn't really do Halloween in Holland back in the good old days, but... My oma told me stories about them living on a farm. And they could just see the next farm. Like it was like farm fields and, you know, they could see the next farmhouse, but it was, you know, like a kilometer away or something like that. 
But imagine trick-or-treating back in the good old days when you didn't have like a little town to go through. But she would talk about, like I said, the distance between. And I thought, trick-or-treating would suck. (laughs) Maybe that's why they didn't do it. (laughs) Um, But I remember when I was a kid, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to stab cherries as I'm telling you the story. When I was a kid, um, there was always a neighborhood in our town. And I think a lot of towns are like known for this too. Um, where there's like an area, like, like a wealthier area of the neighborhood where they give out more candy or better candy or like full size chocolate bars or full size candy. Oh yeah. What was I talking about? I was talking about, uh, essentially giving out candy. And if that's something you like to do, or do you shut your lights off? Because I think there does come a point in the evening where like enough is enough. And there are, (laughs) there are neighborhoods where like, People buy hundreds of units of candy. So like they'll buy a box of three or four or 500. They'll run out and then turn their lights out. But still all night long, the kids are knocking on the the doors because they have all the Halloween decorations. But like after 9 p.m., because around here it gets dark at 4.30 around Halloween time. Maybe not that late, but sorry, not that early. I think maybe around like more 5.30. But man... They just don't let up. (laughs) And it's like, I've already spent so much money. Like people put so much money and effort into Halloween. And I love that. I I absolutely would do the same thing if I had neighbors to see the effort that I put in. But I don't. So I I mean, I could do it for myself, but it's not the same thing. Okay, I got a couple cherries here on a stick. And I'm not going to lie. I'm going to go for three (gasps) because I went for four by accident. I'm going to eat one right now. It brings me so much joy. That flavor. Go to Cocktail Emporium, or maybe you can find this somewhere else. Buy these cherries, because if you enjoy a little something in your cocktail, or maybe even like a little something on your vanilla ice cream at night, this is it. But I'm warning you, if you do, it's going to be very difficult for you to eat any other type of maraschino cherry. It's like if you come to my house and I make you split pea with ham soup, you're never going to be able to eat it anywhere else ever again. Or my meatballs or, you know, just saying, just just a warning. <laughs> but I learned from the best. And that's one thing I'm not afraid to do is like make dinner for a lot of people. Because there's been plenty of times where we have not, we don't have guests coming in from Holland, but like they're in town, they're renting a place somewhere and there's like no dinner plans yet. And I'm like, come to my house. And they're like, are you sure? <laughs> there's 12 of us. I'm like, I don't care. Like, as long as I know how many people there's going to be, I'm good. Oops. Um, so yeah, but I do have a couple go-tos when I have that many guests. Oh my gosh. I'm going to call this <laughs> cocktail Stab Me in the Heart. Yep, that's what it is. Stab me in the heart. You know why? Because I can never enjoy another cocktail after this. <laughs> it's so good. No, it's just fun. It's fun to create things. It's kind of like cooking trying a new recipe, but kind of like adding a twist to it. But a lot of times it can end in disaster. Like I've tried to do like, okay, there's a, there's a certain cookie called monster cookies. I think that's what they're called. Anyway, it's just a friend of mine makes them and they, I can't really eat them anymore because they have wheat germ in them and like, they're very weedy. (laughs) It's not like I can make them with gluten-free flour. They'll taste completely different. Um, but I tried to make a batch. I had the recipe and I tried to make a batch more healthy. So I was like using less sugar, using a different type of like flour, like almond flour. And I said, you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and sometimes, yeah, when it comes to certain recipes, cutting corners with, with ingredients or trying to make it healthier. Why? To save yourself like four calories? Because it's still going to be, you know, insanely bad for you. <laughs> but, you know, I will say that I don't really 
eat a lot of sweets. I, I just because, and I would, but I don't. Usually, I'm like watching my carbs, right? And sugar is just like pure carbohydrates. But there's this sugar called monk fruit sugar. I've talked about it before. Um, and however it's made or wherever it's derived from, the monk fruit, it tastes just like sugar. And it's like, I'm not telling you something that's a lie because, <laughs> you know, you've had sugar alternatives like stevia, hate it. Um, the only other one that I've had that's kind of decent is xylitol. It sounds like a chemical, but it's like not. Um, and it's both apparently also very good for your teeth. But, um, but stevia, Splenda, these sugar imitations are like bad. But this monk fruit sugar that I buy is like whoa the same thing i can make whipped cream with it like if i'm heavy keto where i need lots of fat i'll be like i can whip whipping cream like 35 percent cream with this monk fruit sugar and it tastes just like whipping cream so i've any recipe that i make where that requires sugar i use the monk fruit because it acts the same it's like one-to-one -one, uh measurement wise but wow um what was my point mm, i don't know that's <laughs> it's gonna happen a few more times this episode i think um, but look at this, you guys. What have you thought about my holiday cocktails? I mean, my, sorry, my Halloween cocktails. Whenever I say holiday, I think of Christmas. So Christmas will be fun too. And I think, let's see, how many Fridays are there in December? Because <clears throat> there are five Fridays in December. Woo! That makes me excited because I can make five different cocktails. And also conjure up five different outfits. Um, and it's going to be a blast. Oh my goodness. Yay. Okay. Um, this is a Halloween episode. So far it hasn't been very creepy besides my lipstick probably all over my teeth. And if it is, then... I don't care because it's Halloween. <laughs> um... Yesterday, I had my Invisalign attachments removed. And if you've ever had Invisalign, you know what I mean. But if you haven't, Invisalign attachments, I have to watch the flames, um, essentially are like little bumps on your teeth that will help your Invisalign trays click onto your teeth and stay on. You have to let me know if anything paranormal starts going on around here because... I don't want to miss it. <laughs> um, but I had them removed because I'm going for my very first like official um, veneer appointment where I'm getting wax ups made. And I don't really understand what that even means, what wax ups are. It's not a like super long appointment, but um, I've, I have to whiten my teeth daily uh, before... I get my veneers essentially to kind of match my natural color of my teeth to the veneers. So, so I'm, the veneers aren't like stark white and then I have like yellow teeth, but my in veneers won't be crazy white. Um, that's one thing that I expressed. I was like, I've seen it before where people's teeth are abnormally white and it's quite obvious that they have veneers or I'm, I'm all about the natural look. Even, even I have like, I wore Invisaligns for 10 over, just over 10 months and my bottom two front teeth still kind of cross over a bit. And I was like, leave them. Like it did like the Invisalign tray did not quite do its trick because that will happen sometimes where if you don't wear, and it's probably my fault from not wearing them like as much as I should, but sometimes some certain teeth won't move. And that's why I know what, what went on. But it doesn't bother me that I have a little crossover on the bottom. It makes them look a little bit more natural. Like to have completely perfect teeth, it scares me a little bit just because it's obvious. Like I kind of am more about like a, a more of a muted perfection. <laughs> like, yes, oh my God, I got perfect teeth. But they might wonder like, are they veneers? That's kind of what I'm looking for. But uh, I had my Invisalign attachments removed because I'm whitening my teeth, but I had exterior attachments on the bottom teeth. I had like six of them and I'm like, I'm whitening my teeth, but they're going to remove these attachments eventually. And then I like, <laughs> is it going to be like white around? And then the attachment where the attachment was like 
a different color. So I was like, I think we should. And then it was just a bit of a miscommunication with my dentist. And because I live in a small town, my dentist is in Calgary. So I was like, well, rather than make a trip to Calgary, I'll just like deal with it here. And they're like, yeah, hey, that's good thing you caught that. You know, <laughs> not a big deal. Because to be honest, you can still whiten your teeth after you have your veneers. But I am getting bonding done on the bottom teeth. So I'm getting eight veneers across the top. And we were going to do six. And I was like, when I smile, I kind of show that, like, that fourth, like, the tooth beyond my canines a little bit. And I, I, it bugs me when I see people with veneers and it's like, you can see where they stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I didn't want that. So I was like, eight. We'll go for eight. And then the bottoms um, are just going to be bonded rather than have veneers in the bottoms, too. So... Anyway, this is going to be expensive, you guys. Like, whoa, crazy expensive. But the reason why, because originally I was going to go with bonding, which is where they pretty much put a composite material on your tooth, put a blue light on it, it hardens. So if you've ever chipped a tooth and had it fixed, typically it's just bonding that they'll use. Um, it's a very hard material. It's not as hard as your enamel, but it's like something that will last for quite some time. In fact, I have bonding on my front tooth because when I was about 11, I chipped my front tooth. Uh, I never told my mom this, but it was, I was making out with my boyfriend <laughs> and chipped my tooth. And I was like, I was eating a popsicle. Or I don't know what that was. <laughs> That's, maybe that sounds even worse, but I um, chipped my front tooth and it wasn't super bad. It was more of like a surface chip. So you couldn't see it looking straight on. But if I looked down, you could see the front top part of my tooth missing. And um, the dentist fixed it for free. But I think he had the hots for my mom because my mom's a babe. So I can't blame him. Um, and so I had, I've had bonding before, but um, what was my point again? <laughs> told you it's gonna keep happening but my bottom teeth will be bonded and uh yeah it's gonna be interesting like the process is I'm really happy that I went to the place that I went to because I've seen I've been watching um like tooth transformations teeth transformations on YouTube constantly people's veneer journey people's bonding journey and I've seen a lot of people that get veneers um have like a one day transformation where they go from like crooked yellow teeth to bright white perfect teeth they have to do a lot of like shaving of the natural tooth and remove a lot of like tooth <laughs> just shave off a lot of the tooth so that they look like they've got like little cat teeth like little tiny little which freaks me out but because I went to a cosmetic dentist so there is a difference okay in case you didn't know and you want to have something cosmetic done in, in the sense that it's not a cavity or it's not a you know a, a root canal or something it's something aesthetic so there there are different types of dentists now my dentist um, in Calgary I've said this before. She's a fucking babe. She's so beautiful. I don't know where she's from. She sounds like she she might have like a like an Eastern European accent. But I'm like, wow, like what a boss bitch. <laughs> anyway, but she she's like, she basically told me because I was like, I want to get my teeth bonded. I want this. I want that. And she's like, no, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, she wasn't that blunt, but she was like, see how your teeth are. If you want this look, we need to straighten your teeth. And I always like, I straighten my teeth. I was like offended. I was like, what? My teeth are straight. She's like, notice how they go in. I was like, yeah, I guess I noticed that a little bit. But <laughs> she's like, we got to um, we got to fix that. You must go like through the Invisalign process. You, could, you can get, um, she said you can get braces, but the Invisalign is invisible, sort of. Um, you can remove them. You can still do your filming and whatever else, whereas braces are a little bit more invasive. Um, she said, but uh, you don't have like a, a huge journey ahead of you. It's not like I needed a ton of straightening, just more of like realignment and to pull my teeth all sort of forward because they were sort of going in. And so we had to go through that process first. After they were finished, pretty much, uh, she was like, if you're happy with the way that they look. And I was like, yep, yeah. because the bottom one, like I said, does cross over here. And uh, 
I'm like, that doesn't bother me. It's also part of naturally who I am, how my teeth are anyway. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm still holding on to part of who I am. I'm uh, just making excuses. Whatever. If they were straight or if, if they're a little bit crooked, like I said, it either way really doesn't make or break the whole thing. And uh, but the process that the process that has led up to this point now where I'm going to be getting wax ups, which is which is also sometimes an extra step where they will, from what I understand, we're going to go and like wax ups. It's like almost they've created a mold of my teeth and I'm we're going to talk about options. Are there going to be something that I can try on? Am I going to hold up different lengths? I don't know what's going on. Excuse me. I also heard potentially that I might be getting my bottom teeth bonded during that appointment, but I don't know. I'm kind of just going in blind and I'm, I'm like, I need to document all this because I really wish that I kind of had this whole process available to watch online, which it may be available somewhere, but I can't find it. So I'm like, should I be the one? But then you're right up in my face, right up close. You can see my pores. <laughs> you can see my my dry lips. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's a lot to commit to. I actually had a, um, where were they from? Not Budapest. Oh, gosh. Anyway, the, the country, I've never been there. But basically a plastic surgeon that has been like kind of stepping into some some dental stuff, cosmetic dentistry, uh, reached out to me and asked if there was anything that I wanted done in exchange for a video. So they would fly me out there. They would do all the procedures, do all the th that good stuff. Um, and at the time, I was thinking about doing bonding and that we were having that conversation but then I was like, what about warranty? So these are my teeth, okay? What if something goes wrong and then I got to travel, say, say it's Budapest. It's not, but it's that far. Say I have to travel all the way back there to figure out my tooth situation. Like if I have a chip or if I have, we're bonding. Because originally, like I said, I wanted to have my, all my teeth bonded. But because I'm a grinder... I, um, I would definitely chip them off. I'd be wearing a night guard, but even so, uh, the porcelain veneers are sort of like a longevity thing. They're also the most natural looking because they have a little bit of like trans translucency to them, like natural teeth do. They're not opaque white, like, like where there's no see-through factor whatsoever. And this is also where my dentist was like brilliant. She was like, okay. This is what you're looking for. This is what you want. You cannot achieve this with bonding, but you can achieve this with porcelain veneers. And I was like, okay. And so then we talked about the process. She's like, essentially the amount of tooth that she would have to remove for bonding would be similar to the amount of tooth they have to remove for veneers. Because the first thing that came to my mind was like, kitty teeth. I don't want like little sharp, nothing teeth. Um, that's horrifying. And probably very painful. And I was like, ugh, I just, and to be honest, like, I know pain is gain. <laughs> so like it would pay off. But uh, for the natural look that I'm looking for, like I said, very natural. I don't want anybody to really know besides people that have known me. And I'm on camera <laughs> for years now, so people will notice. But um, I want it to be like just a very natural improvement, right? Like I don't want to do anything that's too drastic. Uh, anyway, so... Yeah, I just can't recommend her more. And I, I, I don't know. I just the thought of documenting it and the stress that I'm going to go through anyway, just with like hours and hours in the chair. I don't know. Is it worth it? Mm. Time for another cherry, I think. I'm feeling this, you guys. This is gin, triple sec and wine. Cherry juice. And... Cinnamon bitters. <laughs> mm. How are my bites? Are they healing over yet? Mm. Did I show you guys this book that I got? <laughs> I got this from Cocktail Emporium. Big surprise. Now, I love... 
Look at the illustrations in this book. So every page is a cocktail. And it shows kind of like a little mock-up of what it will look like and the ingredients. Then there's like a little write-up about each cocktail. A lot of times the origination, is origination a word? The origin? <laughs> the origination, <laughs> oh shit. The origin of the cocktail. Here we have Jamaican Manhattan. It doesn't show a cocktail, but oh, that's not a recipe. Oh yes, it is. But it's kind of like a cute cocktail book for like your bar. We're almost like you could kind of have some fun with randomly choosing a page. Oh my gosh, look, Europe. So these are gonna be cocktails that have originated in Europe. Um, are there page numbers? Yes. So you can play games where you roll dice or where you randomly choose numbers and then you have to make that cocktail. Um, that's just me th fantasizing about my family and what we're gonna do at Christmas time. <laughs> Um, but I will say that this book does like the amount of ingredients that each cocktail has. So let me just read. This is called Little Match Girl. Oh my God. My mom cannot tell the story of Little Match Girl without bawling her eyes out. Do you know the story of the Little Match Girl? Now, because I think about my mom crying when she tells the story, I can't not cry when I tell the story. It's not even that I think it's like, I mean, it's extremely sad. But it's just the, the vision of my mother crying when she's telling the story that makes me cry when I tell the story. So I'm not going to tell the story, <laughs> especially after I've had a strong cocktail. Okay, so Little Match Girl, uh, Nim Bar at the Nim Hotel, Copenhagen, Denmark. Okay, so these cocktails are curated in certain areas. Maybe specifically they give credit to where it's from because the Little Match Girl might be a different version somewhere else. So this is kind of cool. Created by Antonio Saldahana de Oliveira. De, de Oliveira. Oliveira. Whoa. Okay. Ingredients. 50 milliliters of Don Julio and Yeho tequila. I have some. In fact, I've got a 350 bottle of Don Julio downstairs from a very special friend. Uh, 10 milliliters of Graham's Ruby Port or Tawny Port. Don't know what those are. So probably this is already botched. I can't make it. Lille Rouge. That's an ingredient. Don't know what that is. Uh, that's 10 milliliters. 10 mils of simple syrup. Okay. Uh, two large pieces of pared grapefruit or orange zest. Easy. Two large slices of galangal or root ginger. Oh yeah, just got that in my fridge, yeah. Let me just make this cocktail for you. So just beware, like I said, that a lot of times you're gonna not have the ingredients for this, unless you have an extensive bar <laughs> or know somebody with connections that has these ingredients or live in the city with a cocktail place. Um, I'm just gonna read this actually. Trivoli Gardens providing merriment to Copenhagen Copenhageners since 1843 is one of the world's oldest amusement parks. Trivoli or Tivoli Gardens is one of the world's oldest amusement parks. And Nim Hotel is serendipitously plopped in the center of this joyful setting. When it first opened in 1909 inside a fantastical Moorish place, Nim was a buzzing bazaar restaurant named for the same hospitable owners who popularized Denmark's now ambiguous open-faced rye-based sandwiches. By 1930, the Danish National Broadcasting Company was rec recording live from Nim, making it a bastion of, of contemporary dance music. <laughs> Since 2008, Nim has taken the form of a soothing Nordic-style boutique hotel with balcony suites, a pool, the shade of fictional Emerald City gracing the rooftop terrace. The shade of fictional Emerald City gracing the rooftop terrace and multiple restaurants that add another layer to its gastro gastronomic history. Nim Bar in what was the old ballroom bristles with sophistication. 
a muted space that allows a birch wood burning fireplace, original lost and found crystal chandeliers, and grand piano to take the center stage. After a day on the Ferris wheel and the animal bedecked carousel, Nim bars afternoon tea or blissful cocktails such as the summery Little Mermaid. Confirm that the fairy tale need not end here. Little Match Girl is an elevated hot toddy, which is wonderfully warming on those frosty days foray through Trivoli Gardens. Forays through Trivoli Gardens. <laughs> Some of these words, I'm reading them properly, but I don't know what the frick they mean. Ideally, it is made with a Viennese coffee maker. But a stovetop coffee pot or a saucepan over low heat covered with a lid will work just as well. This recipe makes one cocktail, but is best served for groups of two or more. Simply multiply the ingredients accordingly. Wow. Okay, so this is actually a warm drink. Combine the liquid ingredients in a small saucepan and place over a low heat. Add the grapefruit orange zest and the galangal or ginger slices to the mixture. Then cover with lid and simmer for three to five minutes. Strain it into a mug to serve. I just took you guys on this journey. And this is one page out of this book. So it's kind of interesting, like, if you were to make cocktails for guests and give them a backstory, like an origin story, it almost, like, enhances the experience, right? Like, if you made Stab Me in the Heart, <laughs> I already forgot the name, for your guests, and you said, hey, there is this girl that has this podcast and she makes cocktails she didn't know what the hell she was doing she added these ingredients because she thought that this and this went together and she was wearing a vampire outfit at the same time you created a story and now they can enjoy the cocktail even more it's almost like no maybe it's different i was gonna say it's almost like reading a book and not knowing what the cover looks like maybe there's a character on the cover or maybe, maybe watching the movie before reading the book. It's the opposite of that. It's like you're creating a bit of a story that enhances your experience rather than takes away. So I, w I would say that my example is actually takes away from your experience because like the freedom of your mind creating characters and, vis and visualizing things can be taken away by, you know, seeing what the characters look like beforehand or whatever, like without allowing you to, your, without allow, allowing your mind <laughs> to just go crazy with its own path. Um, do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe this is hitting a little hard. What's the next one? Ooh, this one's called Mad Dog. Uh, Manhattan at Regent Singapore. Funny, I've been watching, so I'm not do you guys want to No, i'm watching uh the real housewives of sydney i just <laughs> just discovered it and recently watched the entire first season within a couple of days each episode is like 43 minutes so it didn't take too long but um now it's on season two so they got rid of a lot of the trashy characters holy shit if you guys want to see some real trash television like frustratingly trashy who are these people? Why am I watching this? My, I'm losing years off my life type shit. Watch the first season of Real Housewives of Sydney, Australia. And by specific characters that are just trash and just are, it's almost like it's mental illness and it's sad to say, but it's undiagnosed and it's like a free for all. And the delusion is unbelievable like she needs serious help but it's like exploited on the show and it's wild beyond wild but the second season let me hold it like this the second season is um a whole new cast except for two of the girls are still there two of the girls that i really liked are still in it um and a whole other new cast, but they always find these girls that are like, it's the real housewives of Sydney, okay? They're all rich, they all have a complex, they all think they're this or that, they have this, that, 
and everything else. And it's like the lives are wild that they live, like so beyond reality. And what is reality? I'm, I'm not one to judge. My reality, some people would think I live in a fantasy land too, and I kind of do. I live in this beautiful area and I have all these freedoms and, but it's, it's more like the materialistic shit, like the materialism in some of these people that like they super identify with what the brands that they're wearing and the parties they go to and the people they mingle with. And it's like, so, and it's fine. Like everybody lives in their own bubble. No shame to them. They're putting it all out there. <laughs> But that's why I love it. It's so different from like my reality um, that it's, I, I mean, I call it trash TV, but it's very educational at the same time because it kind of makes sense of like what certain people are after. What's the end goal? A lot of them are so unhappy, so m miserable. Like the more money you have, you know, more money, more problems. <laughs> it's really real. Like you have a fantasy of being rich. Well, then you better have a fantasy of not knowing who to trust, not having very many friends because maybe they don't like the fact you have more than them, family members trying to borrow money from you and losing relationships with them and business and sure, money is freedom, but it's also a prison. And that's true. Because ask anybody that's a multi, multi millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire, it doesn't come without its, you know, its negative side as well. Anyway, <laughs> because I'm such a trillionaire that I know <laughs> me and Elon, we were just on a boat the other day, just chatting about our problems, how we should just get rid of all of our money. I said, hey, just put it in my bank account. I'll just be philanthropic. And it's actually true, though. No, that's not true. I, I've never met Elon Musk in my life. Um, but I fantasize about what I would do with the money if I did have access, like, to unlimited funds. And this is, a, like, an interesting question, and I'll leave you with this. You know what? I really did have some more Halloween stuff planned that I cannot even bring on into the next episode. So I might just make this a longer episode. I don't know yet. <laughs> but if you had unlimited funds and I it, like there, it's, it's more complex than this, because do people know that you have unlimited funds? Is it a secret? Like you have to kind of like be very clear if you had unlimited funds what would you tackle? What would you do? I'm very small scale where I'm like, in my town, I think that there could be a much better senior care facility. You know, I have a very soft spot for seniors, always will. And um, an entertainment facility for them. You know, like a whole building next to where they are, so they don't have to travel very far, where the, it's like senior fun times. Where they literally, they could just sit, if they're in a wheelchair, they can throw a ping pong ball and try to hit certain targets. And that is what they do in the afternoon with all their friends. And they compete against each other. And they're just giving her, you know? Uh, or, you know, wonderful meals, culinary experiences. Tonight is going to be Chinese cuisine. And some of them might go, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> because they don't... <laughs> You know? But then they try it. They might like it. They might learn something. Um, I just got back from Spain. I'm going to talk about that whole trip next couple episodes. But every time I travel to Europe, the elderly community that's out and about doing things in Spain, Spain was a big one, but just in general, in Germany, Holland, Italy, there it's like they're out there's just as many seniors as there are younger people middle-aged people old you know what I mean here in Canada it's very different it's like I don't know what the hell is going on and a lot of Canadians are European immigrants even like they're they come from family backgrounds where their their parents were very social and like 
it just really is such a sad thing. And I know that not every community in Canada is like this, and I'm not saying that, but there's such a lack of like community within the elder community, <laughs> community, 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 um, that there needs to be like programs that don't feel like charitable. They don't feel like charity. Like, okay, let's go. Like, you know, just like camaraderie, like a poker club, you know? Oh, we don't want to promote, like, because somebody's going to met. Well, whatever. If if Johnny Jenkins <laughs> gets mad because he lost all his tokens from gambling, well, guess what? That's life. But, and not saying that that would ever be the issue. It's kind of a bad example, but... You know, especially winter communities like where people are very much inside and can't go outside and walk to the coffee shop or whatever. It's just there's we have a a problem here and maybe it's the same in a lot of like, you know, American communities, too. But just just keep this in mind. If we're lucky. We will be elderly, too. Okay. Okay. Do you want to be sitting in the old folks' home with nobody coming to visit you? I'm not saying that this is how you'll be, but this is the reality for a lot of people. And especially, it's almost like the younger generations aren't taught to spend time or be with our elders, like be with our grandparents. Or And it depends on your relationship with your parents, right? Or their relationship with their parents, So which, which affects your relationship with your grandparents. And... It's not taught in schools to go and res not respect seniors, but like honor them kind of because it's like you're looking in at your own future. You want to do something now to the point where you when you are 85 or 95 in a home because your your children love you, but they can't care for you in the way that you need. Now you're out of the home that you've lived in for 70 years in this new place, you're scared, you don't know what to expect, maybe your spouse has passed away, you don't know anybody, hopefully your nurses are kind to you, but that's all that there is? You're just going to now go for breakfast when you're told it's breakfast time or maybe it's brought to you. And then maybe at 12 o'clock there's reading time and maybe that's it? Maybe that's what you want to do. That's fine. But maybe there needs to be more. Because you, as a senior citizen, might be might need more. I don't know. It's just there's nothing, you know, like it's it's hard. And I think I find a lot of families turn their backs on their senior family members. And it's sickening. And I don't want to <laughs> make this like a down episode but the reality is is that it's important that you put out what you want back right it's like the golden rule do unto others as you want done unto yourself maybe that's not even it but that's, that's kind of what I know of to be it um but that's where I'm like oh, I, I have this idea for like <laughs> it sounds so lame, but like super seniors. So I, maybe I talked about this before. I don't think that I have, but I keep having this fantasy about like like a food service or like a soup service for senior citizens. And I make really good soup. I have like five or six. I'm kind of expanding that. Really great soups. And soups are sort of great all around. They're easy to digest. You know, you have to be careful of certain ingredients. You don't want sodium to be too high, blah, blah, blah. But, like, you would kind of adapt to what the needs were. But to get a nice warm vessel of soup, like, every second day even, because you give, like, two days worth of soup, you know, because, like, I don't know. Even my dad, he does, he eats like a, you've heard the saying, like, he, like a, like a grasshopper, like you just have a little bit, and he really doesn't eat very much at all. But I also know he's not really getting the nutrients that he needs because he's maybe will get the odd refrigerator meal. Like he lives very far away from me, all the way across Canada. So I can't be there to be like, hey, here's like a, you know, week's worth of like meals. Um, many people are like this, where they just are not, 
And I mean, nutrients is longevity, right? You need to be fed properly to have a good day, to feel great, to maybe even look forward to something in the end of the day. Whereas like if you, because I am a foodie, I love to look forward to dinner. Like if I'm making dinner, it's one thing if I'm going out for dinner, it's like, oh, like I, I look forward to that the whole day. And not everybody's like that. My dad's always been very like, oh, whatever. No, I don't need to eat. Like he's never eaten breakfast. He just goes to work. And then he just will eat lunch maybe and then maybe dinner. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, what the hell? Like, that's just how he's been for so long. Um, but it's like a little something to look forward to. If you were like a senior citizen at home and maybe you have mobility issues, it's hard for you and you're buying frozen meals or whatever. But like to get a really delicious delivery of soup makes me really happy the logistics are insane where you'd have to really be like insurance is a problem <laughs> you know what i mean it's not as simple as like here i am with soup somebody has an allergic reaction like you have to be very careful about like how how you go about it and i don't want it to taste like airplane food because like okay say somebody can't have salt well i made the whole batch of soup with salt so like does that person not get to eat that day like well i don't know there's just like lots of logistics involved um, but I have, I do have this fantasy somehow. And it's, I've had this idea before with like, there's a charity called love for our elders. It used to be called love for the elderly, which is rolls off the tongue a little better, but love for our elders is called now. And, um, it's where you can write a letter to a senior, send it off to this charity. And then they go to senior homes and give each elderly person a letter, which is beautiful but I was talking to somebody about it and they're like, no, that's, that's lame because it's not directed to them. It's like just a random letter that's written and it doesn't have their name on it. It's like, oh, because as a younger person who can't relate to being in a home all the time, just receiving something that's handwritten, even if it was like... <laughs> Even if it was just a recipe or something, it's tact. It's like something that somebody else touched. It's it's. But the intention is like, I hope you're having a beautiful day. I hope that you had a great meal, or I hope that you are playing games in your home or whatever. Like just something positive. It's still something, right? It's not. It's not a bad thing, but the person I was talking to was like. No, it's, that's, that's like almost, like they were almost offended. And I was like, but then that just like, maybe to some seniors, they'd be like, oh, pff, that have family that write the actual letters and send the real photos of their grandkids or whatever. But so many people don't have that, right? So it's kind of a perspective thing. It's like, I think it's a brilliant idea. It would be better if you could have a website to go to where you could actually choose a specific senior. You know, it's sad to think about the one that doesn't get chosen. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Say you're, say you're allotted like 10 to choose from. Like it's a random thing. Choose one and then you can know their name and write their name and know what they look like and know where they are, like the state or the, or the, the province that they live in. And then that, you know what I mean? So I, I have all these ideas about ways to kind of help seniors and, and, and to be honest I should go and like I sh because I talk the talk I should walk the walk and go and volunteer some time there to spend with them because I do have this like passion inside of me for senior citizens and it's not <laughs> it's not so lame and oh my god I swear to god my dress is just lifted like six inches um anyway <laughs> but the heartbreak factor for me is crazy. The thought that I would go back to see Susie again and she passed away the night before would just kill me. <laughs> Sorry, that's not the right... I didn't... I should choose different words. But the heartbreak would be immense for me. But it's about them, right? It's not necessarily about you. So the fact that you were there for the last three days of their life made the last three days of their life like amazing. But for me, I would just be wrecked. Like I'm almost going to just lose my mind <laughs> thinking about it. But 
my point is, <laughs> is I'd love to do something. I don't know what exactly it is. I'm so busy, but that's never an excuse for anything. Cause like there are 24 hours in a day. <laughs> but anyway, okay. After this cherry, I'm going to read some creepy stories because it's Halloween. When this airs, it's October 27th. And, um, which is like four days, five days from Halloween. But it's still October. And I want to make it special. Okay. Um, I pinned. I recently learned that you can pin tabs on Safari. So I use Safari as a browser on my iPhone. And you can pin certain tabs where if you're always going to one website like Pornhub. <laughs> Just joking. But like any website, I'm, I'm constantly going to like, um, let me see what I have pins. Pin ch well, check my reservation to be able to navigate through Spain to all of my villas. <laughs> anyway, but you can like pin, um, like if you want to check out HelloFresh, what they're doing that week. Not sponsored. But you can have it pinned at the top so you don't have to always type it in. Like Amazon, for example, or I mean, Amazon, I just type the letter A in my browser and it pops up. But anyway, this is called 25 Disturbing Creepy True Stories. I'm kind of leaning more towards the creepy true stories because <clears throat> a lot of times there's like newspaper articles about it. It's like backed up. It's not fake. It's not like I had this ghost experience one time where I saw that. No, it's not like somebody's account of what happened. It's like reality <laughs> ish. Um, and creepy true stories. Cause I'm telling you nothing creeps me out more than a creepy true story. Uh, the first one is called watcher. And I may be repeating stories here because there's only so many creepy true stories. <laughs> When a New Jersey family moved into their 1905 colonial-style home, they received several threatening and creepy letters from someone called the Watcher. In the letters, the author referred to the family's three children by saying, The young blood you have brought to me, and have you found out what's in the walls yet? Fearing for their lives, the Broadus family moved out and sued the former owners for not telling them about their stalker. So I've heard the story before. Have you found out what's in the walls yet? That's kind of a creepy thing to say. Um, but the fact that the family sued the former owners for not telling them about the stalker. Sued them for what? Like how much? This one's called Trapped. <laughs> By the way, I'm reading these along with you for the first time. In the aftermath of Pearl Harbor, it was discovered by military by the military that sailors were trapped in the sunken USS West Virginia. Okay, they were trapped. Sailors were trapped in the sunken USS West Virginia. Realizing there was nothing they could do to rescue the survivors, they told their families they died during the attack. Months later, when they finally got inside, they found three men who'd found an airlock that survived for 16 days. It said no one wanted to guard the USS West Virginia because... They could hear the banging of those trapped inside. No one wanted to guard the USS West Virginia because they could hear the banging of those trapped inside. That is freaking freaky, man. Also, like, with that whole... The Titan that sank. What was it? Is that what it's called? That uh, submarine. There was random updates online about how they were like banging noise hurt noises hurt that were heard <clears throat> and like which every time you'd hear something would like give you more hope that they were going to be found like alive and anyway just brings me back to that crazy time anyway um this one is called Isa isai sagawa this man is a cannibal from japan that murdered and ate his friend in 1981 after years of dreaming about it he said he'd really wanted to eat her living flesh <laughs> what's even more creepy and disturbing is he never went to jail for it and lives as a free man in tokyo 
He said he eventually wants to eat humans again. Okay, so if he... He murdered and ate his friend, and, I, and but he never got arrested for it. It could be like a, like, a, like he kind of pulled the card, like, I'm not mentally well or something. And then they, I don't know how that works. Because if, if she was like, take a piece of my leg and he had like a sashimi chunk of her thigh or something, and then she was still alive. But that's weird. Okay. Lamprey Nightmare. In 2015, a creepy and strange thing happened to Fairbanks residents in Alaska. They found blood-sucking lampreys wiggling around on land, far from the water. Several accounts claim they found one in a parking lot and one on someone's front lawn. No one really knows how they got out there, but wildlife officials think maybe seagulls pick them up and drop them off later. Of course, the lampreys are not like slithering along the ground like miles off the ocean. It's birds. Would you not think? <laughs> what else would it be? Okay, this is sick. I did actually read this one. This one's called Finger. This creepy story began or brings a whole new meaning to the Arby's catchphrase, we have the meats. In 2012, a young boy found a finger inside his Arby's sandwich when he bit a piece, bit into a piece of it. The finger belonged to an employee who sliced her finger while using a meat slicer and left it without telling anyone about it. This is such bullshit. It's got to be. Do do do. I'm in the back. I'm just slicing meats. Slice off my finger. Do do do. Just keep on doing my business. I'm just gonna go and take a nap. I'm gonna take the rest of the day off. Who does not say that they cut their own finger off? I mean, I. That's it's possible, but it's very unlikely. Human hand. This is the last one I'll read. While cleaning out her grandparents' attic in Tampa, Mike Lopez's sister came across a disturbing find. A skeletal human hand with a ring on it. It was hidden in a box along with a map and gold coins. Even more disturbing, no one has been able to find out whose hand it was and if it's actually human after all. What is this? What is sh Who writes this shit? Even more disturbing, no one has been able to find out whose hand it was. Okay, but you're not going to tell us about the map and the gold coins? Where was the map? Leading to. <laughs> the rest of the body? Anyway, okay, I'm going to read one more. This is called D uh, Bear Brook Murders. And there's like a family of like CGI people that don't exist. In 1985, a hunter discovered a 55-gallon drum in Bear Brook State Park in New Hampshire. Inside, he found the bodies of a young 20-year-old woman and a small child aged 5 to 11. For years, authorities couldn't identify the bodies despite solid leads. Then, 15 years later, another barrel was discovered in the same spot. Two children were found inside this drum, and they believed they're related to the woman. Police believe a man named Robert Evans could be the killer, but the case is still unsolved. Fifteen years later, another barrel was discovered in the same spot. Were they buried? Probably. But who takes the time to bury a barrel? Like, just bury the bodies? Anyway. <laughs> I'm just a little... I mean, this is from a website called List25. I'm just reading what I read. I didn't write it. I don't know any more information, but I'm almost done this cocktail. Oh my God, you guys, I hope you have an amazing Halloween. I hope that you are in the Halloween spirit. And if you're not, that's totally fine because Halloween can also be very like ominous and creepy and weird. Um, I'm a Halloweeny. <laughs> I'm a Halloweenish type person. <laughs> um, and I enjoyed this month. I hope you did too. Uh, of course, my next podcast will be November. Oh my God, it's going to be so exciting. I'm going to swap out my trees for Christmas stuff but maybe not too early right there's a whole thing about like setting up anything Christmassy before Remembrance Day so I'm just gonna I'll we'll see how it goes I might just vibe slowly pop little things around um but I've officially reached a thousand subscribers for my Kitty Liquor podcast thank you to all of you that are subscribed it really does mean a lot and uh 
we're just rolling. I mean, I, I know I've had my podcast on my main channel for a while, but like the fact that Katie Licker has a thousand subs, that's a lot. That's like a thousand people. That's pretty crazy. So thank you for that. And what else? Subscribe, <laughs> like this video if you did enjoy it. Um, leave in the comments down below any questions, comments, cocktail suggestions. Um, November, December is going to be, I think November will be more like autumn themed cocktails. And then December, of course, very Christmas themed stuff. I've got lots of things planned. So I hope that you're excited. And I hope, like I said, that you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content. Or if you're not subscribed to my main channel, Cat Wonders, subscribe there too. And thank you for tuning in um, to episode 110 of Kitty Liquor. That's L-I-Q-U-O-R. Don't get it twisted. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.